We all love the look of Typeform. It's smart, clean, and modern. But let's be realistic. It's not meant for small and medium businesses. Good thing there's an alternative that's called Quill Forms, and it's meant for WordPress. So let me show you what I'm talking about right now. So the plugin that I'm talking about is called Quill Forms, and it's smart, clean, modern, and it also has animation just like Typeform. But we don't have those limitations on form submissions, so it's more flexible, plus we have the flexibility of WordPress. So if you want to grab it, the link will be provided in the description. Now let's jump over to my Quill Form dashboard to show you how to actually build a form. Now this is my WordPress dashboard right here. And once you install the plugin, you're going to get this little menu on the left. I'm going to click on it. And one of the things I like is that it's going to open up a panel. So you have like a nice clean look like you would on a SAS. Now to build a form, we're going to get started by adding a new form right here. And we're going to call this um, form for video. Let's go ahead and create. And this is going to open up the form builder. Now to get started, we're going to add our first questions here, which is the elements that we're going to add. So I'm going to click on the plus button and we have all available, these all available options here. So I'm going to add the welcome screen, which would be the beginning. You, you don't have to add it, but you can if you want. OK, and then I'm going to ask for the name and we'll call this name. We're going to add the email. Next, we'll add a multiple choice and some long text and we're going to finish off with the thank you screen. OK, so now we added the elements that we want to use for our form. Now, to edit each one of these elements, when I hover over them, I have the option here with that little wrench. So if I click on the wrench, which they call control, is where we're going to edit it. So in the image, I'm able to add an image here and it could be an image or it can be a GIF like in this case. And I'm going to add this little funny dog right here. Then we can change the layout. So if you want to test different layouts, see what works best for you and what looks modern, well, you can just go ahead and choose one of these. Next, we have this set maximum width of the attachment if we want to. Use fancy border radius, custom HTML, and the button text. So for example, it says, let's start, and we can change that if we like. It's, it's good for me. I think it's fine, OK? So let's close this one. Again, with the next one, we have the wrench right here. And for each one of the elements, for the type of element, we're, gonna, we're going to have different options. So in this one, we can add image and we can make it required also. We'll skip that one for now. We have the type question here, which we are going to use it for the email. OK, there we go. Again, we have the settings for that. For the multiple choice, let's click on the wrench. Again, we have the choices. We can add image, make it required. But we have different type of options. So in this case, we can make it a multiple choice. So depending on the question that we're going to ask, we can enable that or not. Multiple choice means that they can choose two, three, four of the options available. So let me add some options here. OK, and the question is going to be, do you like quill forms? So I'll say, hell yeah, nah, maybe. OK, those are the ones that I'm going to add. OK, let's go ahead and close this. And I'm going to add, type in the question here. So for example, do you like quill forms? All right, that's going to be the question. Oh, and again, in the settings here, there's different layouts. So you can see the layout right here. And let me add an image to show you how that's going to look. So I'll add these jumping guys right there. And again, you can decide what looks best for you. What, what do you think is, is the best choice for you? Again, if I set multiple choice, it's going to allow me to select one of these. Vertical alignment. In this case, it's already in vertical alignment, but I'll show you what happens if I choose, choose like this. So like vertical alignment, you see how it, it's a drop down now. Now, like, well, it's not a drop down menu, but it it's vertical. All right. I'll leave it like that. I think it looks better. Oh, I like this one. There we go. I like that. And we also have another option right here, which is theme. Inherit means it's going to use the theme for all of the settings, or we can use override to choose different type of themes. I'll give you an example in a bit. OK, so there we go. We have type question here, which would be, I don't know, any use case. We'll say, um, what do you think about Quill Forms? And I'm going to add a name here. OK, so for example, with this little option right here, which is a recall, and I would also call it a variable. We're going to grab the variable from the name. So I'm going to grab it here and we can use any of the ones here. But in this case, I'm going to use the name and then I'm going to add a question. So in this case, once I go through this step and I add my name, well, it's going to add it automatically here. And there's different use cases that, well, you can give this. OK, that's pretty cool. And last, we have the thank you. OK, and again, we'll add another image here and we'll add these guys like, hey, we're happy because you finished um, filling out this form and there we go. So we have this ready. We have a quick form. Let's go check it out in this little I button right here, which is a preview. And we can test it out. If I click enter, it's going to work just like it would on type form. Um, my name, which is Jorge. Go next, email. 
go next. Um, I'll choose something like this. Whoops, I actually want to say, oh yeah, <laughs> there we go. Enter, and you can see right here, this is the variable or the recall as they call it, and it grabbed it from the name that I just typed in. So that's pretty cool. It's a neat feature that it's gonna depend on how you want to use it. We'll submit it and we get the thank you message, okay? So that's how easy it is to use this. Okay, so now that we've tested it out and we like it, we could go ahead and publish it to save it, but we're not done yet. There's a lot of things that we could do with um, Quill Forms. And now we're gonna go into the theme settings. Now we can create themes and have them ready to start using them. In this case, I created these two themes, which are kind of weird, but it's just for testing purposes. On this one, it changes the font, and this one changes colors and button styles. But we can go ahead and edit these themes or create a new theme. If I go to create a new theme, it's gonna take me to customize, and I can change the general settings here. So I can say new, I'm gonna choose the font that I want to use. So this one, I can select solid colors, I can use gradients, I can use an image if I want, a background image, which makes it, which makes it look really nice. Add a logo to this, question settings, for example, all the settings for these, like font size for individual um, sections of the form, the answer settings, the button settings. So in this case, if I want to change the button text, I want to change it to light blue and I'll change it to something like gray. No, let's keep that, make it white. So I choose white and we can change this different colors. See how it changes the buttons, the colors right here. That's pretty cool, right? And then we have the border radius, border width, a lot of things that we can change, the error message settings, the progress bar settings, and all of that good stuff. And we can save this and start using it if we want to save it. But in this case, we'll keep it as it is. So once you have a theme, you can start customizing also the theme look on the builder over here. If we go to the main section, remember I told you that we can use custom themes independently. So for example, this will use the original one, but I'm going to change it for the name. So I'll click on the little wrench, and I'll go into the theme and I'll use override. So in this case, I'll select the theme and I'll use this one, okay? So what's going to happen? Let me show you the preview. So once I click start, the name is green, it's different. And then I go continue and it changes to the next one. So those are things that we can do with this. I mean, you can really make it really interactive and look really nice once you start doing that. I mean, it looks really nice when you do this. Okay, so that's for the themes. Next we have notifications list. If I add a new notification, for example, um, notify, I'll just name it notify really quickly. Um, I can activate it, deactivate it, send a notification to. So in this case, I'll change, send it to myself. Click enter, I can add more emails to this. I can add the reply to email. In this case, it's gonna grab it from the variable, from the form, add a subject to this. I can, I can say like um, form submission, all right? And then we have the message here. You can grab, get all the answers or add the variables that we want to use here. For example, if I want to make it look nicer, I can say, for example, name, type it in, and then it's going to grab the variable right there. And it's going to automatically add it to it, okay? And we also have conditional logic. So in conditional logic, it's really useful for different type of use cases, depending on the notification that you want to use. For example, I could say that um, over here in the quill forms, if, it's, if it is um, a nah, all right, so if they don't like it, send it to this specific email. So I would send it to another email, just an example, right? So this email is going to go to the CEO or I want to get alerted for these type of emails because I wanna take action because if someone didn't like it, then I need to make sure why, okay? If they're dissatisfied or whatever you want to use your form for, but you would use conditional logic in those cases. In this case, I'm not gonna use one, but just to give you an idea. And we can add more notifications to this. We also have the general settings for this, for example, the hide progress bar, disable swiping wheel, etc. All of these for the message, we can change these, customize them for the documents also. And next we have are the conditional logics. Now conditional logic, we first have to choose the element that we wanna work with, and then we go into conditional logic. So in this case, mm, I'm gonna choose this one right here, okay? So I just chose it, go to conditional logic, and then we start. So we'll add a conditional jump rule. In this case, we're gonna say if, do you like quill forms is, um, I'll say uh, a nah, all right? We're gonna go into this block, the screen. Okay, so what am I doing here? So if they say nah, we're going to skip one of the questions and it's gonna take them right to the thank you page. So it's just an example of how this could be used, okay? So that's the way you can use this. We also have the calculation, the calculator. If you want to add a calculation rule, that's also possible. The points and variables, if you want to do that, right? 
And we also have the hidden fields and UTM parameters if you want to set that up. Now, what else can we do? Once you've set that all up, we have this chair. Let me show you really quickly. So you can grab this link. Let's open it in the next section here. Here we go. And we can actually preview it here. There we go. Oops, that's not an email, but you can go ahead and test it out. We also have the short code if you want to use short code embedded on your site. And there's also the iframe embed system. So you have all those available. We can also view the results once. Well, let me save this. View results once they're ready here. Integrations, if you want to integrate with any of these available options, it's available. One of my favorite integrations would be webhooks because with webhooks, basically you integrate with anything you want using Zapier, Public Connect, Integromat, Make, etc. Okay, and there's the payments section. Now, before I show you the payments, let me edit the design here. If we use this multiple choice, which you can do images if you like, but in this case, I'll keep it simple. I'll just say, for example, t shirt, short socks i don't know keep it simple let's publish okay go into payments and if you want to use payments if you want to sell something you enable this select the currency that you want to use the currency format we add the products so we're going to say it's from here from this field and we're going to set the price for the t-shirt 15 dollars shorts 10 socks five dollars we can also add another type of defined price so i could say I want to use this for shipping, all right? And shipping is going to be a solid $10, all right? There we go. And we can add it there and we can add more pricing to this if we like. Payment models. So if you have, if you want to enable recurring payments, you can do so by enabling this and choose how many, how frequently you want to do it, okay? In this case, we're not going to do that. There's also conditional logic. Conditional logic is used if you want to use different models here. So conditional logic, it's going to help it choose what type of model you want to use, okay? So if it's something that you want to do recurring payments here and not on this one, well, we use conditional logic. So depending what they'll choose. In this case, we're not going to use any of those. By the way, I'll leave the link to the video for the payment system, which is really great for explaining this system, right? Once you set up Stripe or PayPal, we can go ahead and enable this. Then we have the labels. So order details, select payment method, total, and we can edit any one of these. So it's super easy to start selling and receiving payments with um, Quill Forms, and you don't need to have WooCommerce to use this. So that's a really plus for me, All right? So let's go back into design. And there's so many things that we can do with Quill Forms. There's more elements that we can check out here, but it's, it would take a lot of time to cover each one of these. But you get the idea that it's smart, flexible, and it has that animation just like Typeform. So it's a great alternative without that big price tag that Typeform has. So if you want to check it out, like I said, the link will be provided in the description. I thank you all for watching and that's a wrap.